Monsters are usually a source of fear, a reason to run away, but Lisa Trevor's story is one of, if not the most, painful stories in video game history. And while Lisa definitely contains a horror aspect, there's another aspect of sympathy. And when these two aspects collide, they create an extremely three-dimensional character. At 45 years of age, Lisa Trevor's physical appearance had deteriorated over time, her hunched back and elongated arms drooped downwards. Her animal-like posture is the result of not only the virus given to her at a young age, but the shackles placed on her wrists and ankles during captivity have also contributed to her ape-like movement. Lisa's only recognizable piece of clothing is that decaying hospital gown. Now, what isn't obviously recognizable is the mask made from Lisa's human victims' faces that almost entirely covers up her head. Though all these details are pretty gruesome, Lisa's only real benefit from being injected with viruses is that she's nearly immortal as regular firearms hardly do any damage. So you've seen the monster, now how exactly did a typical 14 year old girl transform into this? Lisa Trevor was born in 1953 to George and Jessica Trevor. Lisa's father George was a talented architect known for his expertise in booby traps and puzzles. George impressed a wealthy pharmaceutical founder known as Oswald Spencer. Oswald decides to hire George for a top secret project, a huge mansion complex with a hidden underground lab. Unbeknownst to George, this underground lab would be home to extremely inhumane and certainly illegal experiments. By 1967, the mansion complex was completed. With Oswald not needing George anymore, he decides to kill him because, well, George is the only other person that knew about the secret lab and all of the mansion's puzzles and traps. But instead of simply killing George, Oswald knows he needed to eliminate the entire Trevor family. Oswald invites the Trevor family for a tour of the mansion. At 14 years of age, Lisa and her mother Jessica arrive at the mansion, and while everything seems to be going perfectly normal, Lisa's mother Jessica begins to understand what's really going on. Oswald Spencer orders his men to capture Lisa and Jessica, sending them away to the underground lab to forcefully become experiment subjects. A few days later, George arrives to the mansion and notices that his family is nowhere to be seen. He quickly runs away from Oswald's men, successfully hiding in one of the many hidden passages George built himself. George was able to hide for quite some time until his puzzle building knowledge got the better of him and accidentally trapped himself in a corridor where he can no longer escape. Facing hunger and dehydration, George writes his final thoughts in his journal, which Chris Redfield finds decades later in what was surely the same corridor in which George died. George writes, I've decided to escape. Jessica, Lisa, I pray you are safe. And unfortunately for George, Lisa and Jessica Trevor were far from safe. While George was still alive and trying to escape the mansion, his family were being held captive and tortured in the underground lab he had designed. Lisa and her mother Jessica are eventually administered a virus known as the progenitor virus. Lisa and Jessica were given two different versions of the same virus, and Lisa's worked. Her mother Jessica had no reaction to the virus, and was seen as a useless test subject as time went on, and because of this, Jessica was put down by the researchers. At such a young age, Lisa's parents were murdered, and she still belonged to her parents' murderers, being used as a guinea pig for various amounts of viruses and tests. Eventually, Lisa began transforming into a hideously grotesque monster, and her mental state was nowhere near sane, which made further testing on Lisa harder. So the researchers began sending in imposters of Lisa's parents, which, by the way, yeah, pretty fucked up. Lisa, being under heavy doses of unknown viruses, still recognized that the imposter parents weren't her real parents, she began killing set after set of imposter parents, removing their faces and stitching together a mask comprised of human skin. Lisa patiently waited for the day that her real mother would come back so that she could give Lisa her face back as the flesh on her head began to decay as a result of the testing. Virus after virus, Lisa survived them all, which sparked the interest of Albert Wesker, who personally began giving Lisa his prototypes. Lisa handed those tests very well and survived them all, but it also made her increasingly agitated. With Lisa no longer being of any use and her violent aggression towards her captives, Lisa Trevor was killed in 1995, after nearly 30 years of imprisonment. But little did the researchers know about how immensely powerful a monster they created in Lisa Trevor. She actually survived her initial slaying. This began the realization that after all that suffering and maltreatment, Lisa was nearly immortal and took little to no damage to firearms, even a bomb couldn't kill Lisa. Lisa would then hide out in a cabin near the mansion, hoping to eventually find her mother. In 1998, three years after Lisa's supposed disposal, the Star Squad arrives at the mansion to investigate strange incidents in the area. This is when the protagonist, either Chris or Jill, stumbles upon Lisa Trevor's cabin. 
After three years, Lisa is still on the search for her mother's remains. During a puzzle sequence, Lisa finally finds her mother. In shock and as a sense of closure, Lisa decides her own fate. I don't believe that thing's really dead. Leave this place up to me and go on ahead. In conclusion, Lisa Trevor is an extremely tragic character that provides the audience with a sense of both empathy and horror, something that's really hard to pull off. It's the brilliant writing that makes everything work so well. The most interesting aspect in my view is that no matter how much shit Lisa Trevor went through, she was still able to survive her captivity and find her mother. Thanks for watching Nachos, be sure to comment down below any lore suggestions, and like the video if you enjoyed. Until next time, stay single.